All right, so one of the next things I'd like to do is to be able to bring in some CSV data if <clears throat> necessary. So, for example, if uh, there's some data on culture points or where an incision might be made or specific points on the face or the skull or what have you. <clears throat> so to be able to do that, we need to start out with importing math. We're going to have to deal with that. And we're going to import uh, CSV. All right, having done that, I'm going to need some lists. So I'm going to create a list for data. I'll say that it equals square brackets. Uh, I will also create one called verts and have that equal square brackets. All right, now, having done that, the next thing that I'm thinking is we're going to put in something... this effect. I walk through this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open the CSV file that I referenced. And in this case, there it is. Uh, pretty straightforward. There's a few columns, one specifying the name of the item, and then X, Y, and Z coordinates. All right, so then we create a reader. Uh, for each row in the reader, we specify that the name is equal to row zero, <clears throat> that X, Y, and Z are rows one, two, and three, respectively. And then go ahead and append that row. All right, so that's all great. Then once we've done this, down here, we say that if in row zero, there is nose tip, uh, I have a print statement in place. And that's just so that I can reference things if I need to. I mean, it's really not necessary in this point. Um, but then moving on beyond that, I go ahead and say that I'm adding text. Uh, I'm talking about how it's aligned. This reference is size. Uh, and then I'm giving it some rotation values because this is actually the front view right now as things were imported in when I bring things in directly from STLs that were created in ITK. So this is just me knowing that I want to align the text so that it's flipped up and lined up. Likewise, I have this that's commented out. Uh, this line of code is just cheating the text forward a little bit so that rather than appearing inside of the nose, it appears just outside of the nose. Um, I can rather lengthy line. I can post it below just if there's any questions about it. Uh, and then I create it as a mesh, which may not be the best choice in this case, uh, just considering how much we're gonna be dealing with as far as vertices and things. I'd rather stay away from that. So I might not even keep the text. Um, I'm still kind of playing around with how I wanna deal with that. Anyway, uh, moving on. I will go ahead and put something to this effect in, although I'm probably not going to stick with that either. Uh, but this basically creates a sphere at the same point and gives it a scale. So if I'm looking for an actual object to basically instantiate at that point, there you go. That's how I would do it. Uh, however, in this case, what I actually prefer is I'm going to do something more along the lines of this and this is let's move this over a bit creating an empty at that spot let's tab that over a couple all right so that being the case let's go ahead and run this and see what we get i have an error now let's see what is going on All right, go back to my system console. Ah, okay. All right, so let's move that back. I went in too many times. Let's rerun this. And we are good. So it created an empty, it created a text, 
Let's go ahead and take a look at where they're located. Yep. And it also created the sphere. So knowing that I don't want the sphere in real life, I'm going to comment that out for future reference. I will probably comment out, I'll leave the text for now. 